Hey everyone, welcome back to Safe Fitness Training. I'm JG. Today I want to talk about leg press safety. And when I mean that, I want to tell you about exactly how you can take away your knee pain, how you can take away your hip pain and your lower back pain when using this machine and throughout the day. What we're supposed to be doing when we do strength training is to help facilitate the joints, to strengthen the muscles around the knee, to strengthen the muscles in the lower back, and to strengthen the muscles right around the hip as well. Uh, all of these things are supposed to help us in our daily lives, not to make us hurt. So I'm going to show you all of the things that could be going wrong with your workout, how to fix it, and how you can stop having pain on this machine or in your daily life because of using this machine improperly. If you have been struggling to get started in strength training, there's some links down below on getting started in the body by science method that I've been using exclusively with my clients for about five years at the perfect workout. That's the company that I do work for. There's also links down below if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one fitness trainer, Zoom training at your home or in a Nautilus studio somewhere in the US as well. We have those also. So the biggest issue that I find that people are doing on the leg press is they scrunch themselves into this thing and they're, they're using settings that are not applicable for their own body's limitations. If you have serious knee problems, hip problems, or lower back problems, then this setting that we're on right here that I'm going to demonstrate is very bad for you. And I'm going to show you exactly why. First of all, I saw this video on YouTube and this guy was saying, look, this is the most dangerous exercise that you can do. He's like, don't do the leg press you know, if you have these problems. And, and that's really bad advice because, he, he, you know, and, and by the way, he continued to demonstrate exactly how not to do this exercise, essentially. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to tell you that we can fix that <laughs> and that we can have good settings that are applicable for not hurting your joints in the future. So people, they scrunch themselves up in this. And if you can see, good night, this is crazy. I'm just pushed right into this thing. My knees are at a horrible place. I'm pushed all the way up against my chest. Uh, this is like a 45 degree angle. That's horrible. We want that extended to a 90 degrees. This is way too much pressure on the hips and I'm way too much forward. So if I have hip problems, if I have knee problems, and if I have lower back problems, everything is bad right here. So there's two settings generally on a lot of these leg presses. I really do prefer to use Nautilus equipment because it's so adaptable. One of the settings, the very first one, is just the lower back. And this is going to be a bend directly at your waist, essentially. If your lower back is hurting, this is the very first thing that you want to fix. Think about it like this. If you're doing a squat, right, and you're bending forward all the way like this, and you're picking up a heavy weight, like a deadlift or something like that, you're putting all of that pressure on those erector spinae muscles right in the lower back. That's a very bad thing. You don't want to do that. So, it, so doing a squat position, you, you just barely squat down to where you're initiating the lower back muscles and you're using them slightly, but not to damage them, of course. So this is the same thing. When we lower this, this, this back setting all the way down <clears throat> to where we're bending at the waist, uh, a little bit less, then we're taking that pressure away from the lower back muscles. We're gently engaging them on this machine instead, instead of putting way too much pressure and straining them every single workout. That's no, number one thing. There's also generally a setting that allows us to move the seat, sorry about that noise, backward and forward just like this. And so for me, we want to create it, for me it's right about here, and we want to create this to where if we have knee problems or hip problems, then we're at about a 90 degrees in, in both of those, about, not exactly, but close to it. With the hips, that's not going to be exactly a 90 degrees, but my knees are. And when we begin right here, instead of being all scrunched up into this, with the knees pressed all the way into it, we're not beginning with the pressure in the knees, we're beginning with the pressure in the quadriceps and the glutes first and foremost. Those are the two primary users that we're going to be uh, utilizing here on the leg press anyway. 
if you do, and this is a good generalization of a seat position that would be good for you. Now, if you do have hip problems, then you're actually going to want to bring this seat just a little bit further back. And I mean like a real serious hip problem. You're going to want to create a little bit more room there in the hips to breathe, right? So those are the biggest things. People don't have their seat settings properly when they're wanting to get on a, a leg press and use it. The other thing is speed. If we're moving way too fast like most people do in a gym, this isn't as beneficial for the muscles as moving at a slower pace, but it's going to hurt the joints even worse than you can imagine in the long term. These are called ballistic movements, and it basically just means that we may as well be doing jumping jacks or jumping up and down with huge heavy weights in our hands because that's essentially what it's going to do. It's going to rip apart the connective tissue from the actual muscle itself. That's a bad thing. <laughs> we do not want that to happen. We want to strengthen our muscles naturally. And the slower you go, the more you'll strengthen the muscles essentially, and the less strain you're going to put on your connective tissue, the less strain that you're going to put on your joints. <clears throat> so these are really important things. I want to show you how slow the book Body by Science recommends, which, like I said, definitely recommend that book. I've been using that method for five years with my clients never had an injury. So that's, that's super important. Good. Also, to engage the core as deeply as we're able is so useful. It, it helps us keep better form. We want to relax our hands as well. If we have our hands really tense on these bars and just scrunching them, then the, the neck is going to tense up, the shoulders are going to tense up, it's going to raise your blood pressure unnecessarily. And it's going to possibly give you a bunch of neck tension and problems in the future. So everything relaxes except the muscles that we're utilizing all through the legs. And we really do want to move at a very slow pace. Body by Science recommends four to six seconds for repetitions. I recommend ten full seconds for repetitions. So moving very slow, this is how we would begin for one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, good. We never lock out our knees. We always keep our knees bent. This is very important for safety on the leg press. I've seen horrible videos of people who actually have their knees buckled in the opposite direction when doing this improperly. It's something we never want to do. So again, given those, those things, there still are some people and some clients that tend to have issues, especially in the knees. And so there's always the option of doing a full isometric. And when I say isometric, it means simply just staying in one place. We want to meaningfully load our muscles with weight that we can possibly get to a high intensity with and stay in one fixed position. On this machine, on the leg press, we'll probably want to extend about halfway out and hold it in that position. When I say halfway out, what I mean is half of a full extension. So in my case, with my setting here, which my seat settings are generally in this position, we would very slowly begin and we would hold it right about here. When we do these isometrics like this, staying in one position, what will happen over time as we start to get to a deeper fatigue is those weights, they're going to push right up against the heels. They're going to continue to push us down at a very slow pace. We're going to begin to feel the muscles burning. We want to purposefully engage the glutes to get the absolute most out of this. This isn't just about safety. This is also about effectiveness. So, like I said, holding it in that one position is a very, very easy fix for people who have serious problems with osteoarthritis in their knees. You might, when doing the leg press, you might hear this popping sensation and feel this popping sensation. What it is, is that's actually the bones crackling against each other because that's essentially what osteoarthritis is. It's not fun. But if there's too much of a pain associated with your knees, we want to just gently rest and relax and get out of the exercise and try something else. This isometric is a good way 
to really take the pain out of the knees while we're doing the exercise and in the days to come forward after doing the exercise. So I hope you've gotten a lot out of this. If you do have any knee problems, any hip problems, any lower back issues that this has helped to alleviate or fix in any way whatsoever, um, leave any comments down below, questions that you might have. Please subscribe, like my video, share it with somebody if it was useful for you. Um, I really do appreciate you watching, and I hope that you stick with me for the next video. I'll see you next time.